Hello and welcome to this film which is all about indicators. Now in this film we're hopefully going to try and use the things that we've understood about Ka and the things that we've understood about conjugate pairs to try and understand why it is that indicators change colour as the pH of a solution changes. So first of all let's look at what an indicator is and I suppose really we've just explained that. Okay, An indicator is a substance that will change colour depending on the pH of a solution that it's in. Okay, And here's a quite a large range of different indicators and it shows you their different colours at different pHs. It's important to realise um, that no recall knowledge of this is expected. So we don't need to know when particular indicators change colour. This is just really to show you that there's quite a lot of different indicators out there and they have all different colours and they change colour at all different pHs. But what is important to realise is that indicators in their two different coloured forms basically exist as a conjugate pair. So here we've got quite a well-known indicator, phenolphthalein, and it has two different colours, as you might have seen on that previous table. In pHs of less than 8.2, so that is in the kind of acidic range, it is colourless or white, and when the pH gets above 10, it turns purple. So in between these two, it's kind of a mixture of the two. Okay, so it's changing from colourless to purple. Okay, and what you can hopefully see is that there's a difference in the structure of these two forms and that in fact in the colourless form this OH group has an H plus ion attached and in the purple form this H plus ion has fallen off and we're left with the conjugate base of this weak acid. So that's an important thing to realise about indicators. They are weak acids and often their conjugate base is a different colour to that of the weak acid itself. And because they're basically conjugate pairs, we can write them very similarly in equations to the way we did other acids. So whereas up until now we've been writing HA reacts with H2O and produces A- and H3O+, what we're going to do now is we're going to specify that this weak acid is an indicator by calling it H in. So now we're going to call the conjugate base or the anion of this weak acid in minus instead of A minus. So when H in loses its H plus ion and forms its conjugate base, which is now going to be in minus, short for indicator, we've now got that equilibrium set up. So we can see here that there's an equilibrium between the undissociated form of the indicator and the dissociated form. And what is more, we can write an equilibrium constant for that. So Ka is now equal to in minus the concentration of that multiplied by the concentration of H3O plus and divided by the concentration of the undissociated form H in. And really there's no difference between this and an acid dissociation constant except for the fact that we've called the anion of the acid in minus to make it clear that we're talking about an indicator. Right. Anyway, so now let's have a look at why they change colour. Now in terms of equilibrium principles, um, we can explain what's going on by talking about which way the equilibrium moves. Now, let's see what happens if we write the equilibrium, uh, equilibrium for this reaction. So H in plus H2O turning into um, in minus and H3O plus. Now, we're in, a, in an acidic solution here, pH 2. So this is like the concentration of H3O plus has risen. And the higher the concentration of H3O plus ions, the more frequent collisions will be between these two and the faster the rate of the backward reaction. And so the equilibrium will shift towards the left hand side. So in an, in an acidic solution we'd expect to see quite a high concentration of H in and this would be falling, the concentration of in minus would be falling and so it would appear colourless because there's lots of H in around and not much in minus. Okay? If we're looking at it the mathematical way, well we could say that Ka, which is equal to 5 times 10 to the minus 10, 
is equal to the concentration of in minus divided by the concentration of H in. And I've just separated out the concentration of H plus here. But remember, the concentration of H plus is 10 to the minus 2. So that's 0 0.01. Okay? So in other words, 5 times 10 to the minus 10 divided by 0 0.01 is equal to the ratio of in minus to H in. And we can see, hopefully, that this here is a very, very small number. It's 5 times 10 to the minus 8. So the amount of in minus compared to the amount of H in is tiny. Okay, And that's why there's lots of the colorless form and not much of the purple. Okay, Now let's have a look at the same indicator, but in a basic solution. Again, equilibrium principles can be used to explain this colour change because we've got H in, which is the colourless form, reacting with H2O and producing in minus, which is the purple form of phenolphthalein and H3O+. Now that we're in a basic solution, the concentration of these is going to be very low. So the chances of these two colliding is going to be reduced. And so the rate of the backward reaction is going to fall in relation to the rate of the forward reaction. And so we're going to produce a lot of in minus compared to the amount of H in that we're forming. Okay, So in other words, it's going to appear purple because this equilibrium will be shifted to the right-hand side. If we're looking at this from a mathematical sort of viewpoint, then we can say that Ka, which is 5 times 10 to the minus 10, is equal to, like before, the ratio of in minus to H in multiplied by the concentration of H plus ions, because I've just taken this out of the equilibrium constant expression, which is now 10 to the minus 12, because it's pH of 12. Okay, so in other words, 5 times 10 to the minus 10, oops, divided by 10 to the minus 12 is equal to the ratio of in minus to H in. And now this is equal to 5 times 10 to the 2, or in other words, 500. And so the ratio of in minus to H in is 500, and there's a lot more of the purple form than there is of the colourless form, and that's why it looks purple. Okay, So we ought to try and explain this not only in terms of the equilibrium principles, which we should know from the equilibrium topic and uh, nothing new to us really, but also in a sort of more mathematical way based on what we've learned about Ka. Okay, um, that really sort of ends the sort of link between Ka and pH for this, for this course. Hopefully um, it will make sense, but if you've got any questions or comments, then please feel free to come and see me or to post a comment on YouTube.